ask Brother Dave to lead us in our offertory prayer. Dear God, our Father and Creator, Jesus, our blessed Savior and friend, we'd just like to give you thanks for allowing us once again to gather here in your house to bring honor and glory to you. We just ask that you continue to pour out your blessings upon this church, that we may continue to reach out to the surrounding community and spread your word. We just ask that you continue to bless those on our prayer list, continue to pour out your healing power upon us. Please bless this money to whoever. 
Are you ready for some grace? Amen. If you're ready for grace, you are in a good place. God has more than enough, everything you need to a great abundance. And hallelujah, you can't earn it. We don't deserve it. We have no, uh, none of that attitude, Lord, I'm glad I'm not like those guys over there. Say, Lord, I'm glad you love me the way I am. And if you're in that situation, you are in a healthy, wonderful place. Um, in our library back there, I went back there, and we made it nice and clean so you can get through there. This is a giving. This is not a lending library. This is a giving. And somebody had put this book in there, happy, happy, happy. So that's the kind of wonderful things you can go in there and grab a book and take it to one of your grumpy friends. Amen? <laughs> I also have, <laughs> after we read it, huh? But I also have one more of these. Uh, I found it. This has had a rough life. It has some coffee stains on it. But a, a little capsule of the Baptist faith and message. I encourage you. It fits in your pocket. We're doing the last section on man today. And next week we're going into salvation. We just might camp out right there. Hey, hallelujah. Anyway, this is up there free for the taking. We're going to read through the, the overall view of what we believe as... Um, about man, I showed this to two different other denominations this week, and they read through it and said, I can, I can agree with that. That's not only the Baptist, that's a, I'm not going to tell on them, but anyway, I'll, uh, they hadn't quite come to full revelation. <laughs> but um, I want to encourage you, so many times I get up here and say, man, this is just, this is just, it's got so many good things. Man, if Billy Graham or Jesus just could come up here and just poof, give it to you, but I want to let you know, this is not the only message that you and I, you hear or partake our whole life. And hallelujah, I come up here today and not only share these words, but I want to let you know I was with the seniors Tuesday, and I halfway behaved, hallelujah. Of course, I was a little under the weather, but we had a great time, and we get to see one another. And this is one thing about fellowship. It's not only to hear the word, but you can just come in here and see the word being lived out in life with you. You can see people struggling, hurting, people who have failed, but hallelujah, we're still humbly seeking God. Amen? And that's powerful. All right. Now you have a, make sure you fill in your sheet. I'd hate for someone to, me to check out your bulletin on the back and not have it filled in, and you would have to go back to the first grade. No. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to let you leave. No. Man is a Special, amen, so make sure you write special in there. Special creation of God, made in his own image. He created them male and female as the crowning work of his creation. The gift of gender is thus part of the goodness of God's creation. I just want you to take a special second right here and just realize how wonderful you are. Just let God love on you and love on yourself. Isn't it good to be you're sitting up in church, hallelujah, Feel, just feeling God's love just permeating you and telling you, it's okay, I love you. I know, I know everything about you, but you're right, you're, you're sitting in my house and I got you covered. Just chill, just, just, just let it like a little sponge, just soak up his love. And, and Renee and I are doing this thing and at the end it says, okay, roll over on your side and, it's, uh, <laughs> and it says just... For doing this little exercise thing, just love on yourself a little bit. And it's so funny, I'm sitting there going, oh, I need to, <laughs> we worry too much. God loves you. He got you covered. All right. The second one. In the beginning, man was innocent 
of sin and was endowed by his creator with freedom of, there's your word, choice. That's where you, we get into challenges. Sometimes, I sometimes wish God would just come in and put a big old harness on my neck and a, a little uh, strap on my tongue and just take over everything, but he hasn't done that, and he's not going to do that for you. That's where you and I, the metal hits the road, the rubber hits the road. That's because you are sitting here today, and we're comfortable in his love. But you've got a little rascal down in freedom of choice, and you could go out of here today, and you could make a choice that just hurt, break your heart and break God's heart. Now, that is powerful. Now, you not only can go out of here and break his heart today, do you realize you got that power? Have you seen it happen in the past? But I want to encourage you. You can get down on your knees and humbly come before God and say, God, I need you. I'm, I got freedom of choice and it scares me. Lord, I just come before you and I yield myself and I ask you with all my heart, please come over and take care of my choices that they're in your will. Please, Lord, don't let my choices hurt my ones I love. Please, Lord, don't let my choices diminish my ability to serve you. Please, Lord, for sure, don't let my choices break your heart. And forgive me for everything, every time I've thought and said anything in my choices that was harmful to me and my loved ones and my friends and you, Lord. I'm so sorry. I want to let you know that is powerful. And God sees that. And if you're honest in that prayer, I believe all heaven extends its power out and say, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going, to, I'm going to hold you. I'm going to keep you safe. I'm going to keep you where every choice you make. And I love that it says the promises of God are yes and amen. When, God, when you come into a humble place with God and freedom of choice, God so takes over you where you can't, even if you make a dumb mistake, he, he comes right in there and helps you. Because you, he knows it, if you're truly a child of God, he'll discipline you that quick. And I'm going to tell you, it feels kind of good when, when all of a sudden you feel like something, whoop, grabbing you on the back of your neck and say, don't you, don't even say that. Stop right here. You'll be much better off if you don't say that in this house. Amen? That's God. And that's what we want. We want to, we, and, and, let, and I want to stress the thing about freedom of choice. Freedom of choice is all about God did not want robots. When he came into the house, just like you come home and the children run up to you, you he didn't want them to go, Hello, Daddy, I love you. Hallelujah. He just, and, and it's so wonderful that the vast freedom when our hearts are turned towards God that we have, that even if we were, how many know, you don't want to trust your intellect and your will and your emotions to be right with God, heaven forbid. But God in his great mercy, based on this wonderful message, and we'll cover that a lot in salvation next week. By his free choice, man sinned against God and brought sin into the human race. You need to meditate on that. You need to realize that Adam made a simple, drastic decision, him and Eve. And it has been affecting us all down through. Every one of you are suffering because decisions you made. He can't get around it. And like I love the illustration, it's like the thing where the father said every time the little boy did something, told a lie or stole something or uh, said something ugly to his mom, he'd go out there and make him drive a nail in the wood. And he'd say, are you sorry you did that? Yes, I am. We'll pull that nail back out. And after a while, that piece of board was all torn up. God forgives us, but we still have to pay the price of our decisions. And this is where a grace is especially important because God is able to go, he is able to restore to you every bad decision you made and go beyond in rest restoration. But I want to let you know, how many of you know, um, I have to make a confession. If I find me a good store tomorrow and I have a few minutes, I'm going in and seeing it most likely. I'm going to get me some chocolate. It's 50% off. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Now, I'm going to put it in the freezer, and I'm going to try to, no, I don't want to, <laughs> I'll give it to Renee before I put it. But see, th this is where, for instance, you got to be careful about your decisions, because how many of you know if I get that 20 pounds of uh, Snickers and stuff, and I eat them all tomorrow, I won't be here next Sunday. 
you'll have to come to Lexington Med and visit me. You see how powerful decisions are? And how we, we fall in love with God disciplining us and correcting us. Hallelujah. Through the temptation of Satan, man transgressed the command of God and fell into from his original innocence, whereby his posterity inherit a nature and environment inclined toward sin. Now, here's where I sometimes there, there have questions there because the thing is, is that if you feel like you've lost your innocence, then you're not, a lot of people think, well, I'm not guilty because I'm just prone to sin. And this is where it's so important that we call upon God to help us. Going to the next. Therefore, as soon as they are capable of moral action, this is what we believe, we gather from the word. A child comes into understanding what's right and wrong, then he becomes accountable before God. They become transgressors and are under condemnation. Only the grace of God can bring man into his holy fellowship. And this is one reason where on the day that you're feeling especially righteous and good, you better be very careful that you look down on someone else and just absolutely ruin it all. Because only by his grace does he sustain us. Only the grace of God can bring man into his holy fellowship and enable man to fulfill the creative, and there's your word, purpose that is so powerful purpose of god the next one the sacredness and there's your word of human personality and this is what i want you to feel very oh lord thank you for creating me thank you lord for just giving me so many powerful things choice and freedom and so many things but, Lord, be, I want to be very careful that I don't take this powerful gift to me, of you giving me and not realize that every person that you and I run into, every person throughout the world is sacred to God. And let me, fr friend, when you and I are hateful and mean, that is so grieves the Father. When he goes so far to love and accept, forgive and to take care of you and he extends power and glory into your life and when we turn around and if you study the bible that's where the trouble begins is when after a while you'll walk with god and you'll come into a place and hallelujah you feel it you you know whereas one, at one time you were a sinner and you were prone to sin and that's all you did well then god began to work in your heart and he began, to, as you come to salvation in church, and many times we learn that, you become to understand the power and glory of walking with God, righteousness. And everyone, you'll just kind of flip back. God wants you to come to a point where you're more prone to walk with God than you are to sin. Amen? And that's, that's, that, that's where God wants us to come, be conformed to the image of Jesus. We're prone to righteousness. It's part of our nature. The, the very thought of sin, some certain sins just should make, make your uh, spine curl, I guess, or make the hairs on your neck just stand up and say, oh, I don't even to think of that, getting into that kind of trouble scares me. So when you're prone and when you have this kind of attitude, but the danger is, is when you come to a point and you walk with the Lord, you've grown in stature and in favor with God and man, that you come to a point and then so you run across someone, and you get this little attitude. They may be not as sacred as I am. Those poor people in Peru, bless their heart. I mean, hello, you should try to get running water in your house for goodness sakes. Be very careful. And that's one of the things the Lord showed me. In some cases, the blessings that we have become curses. And this is really the, is that the teaching that we have is that we are created in God's image. We're very special creation. We are marvelously and fearfully created in God's image. But so is every person, and we have to be very careful in our relationships with them. The sacredness of human personality is evident in that God created man in his own image, and in that Christ died for man. Therefore, every person of every race possesses full, and there's your word, dignity. And is worthy of respect and Christian love. 
I believe the thing that God wants to drive home in our hearts is a great humility. What are we going to do about people who are caught up in drunkenness, who are caught up without a work ethic, who are just downright lazy? Who, what about people who are caught up in moral impurities? What about people who are given over to these things? I want to tell you what about. You love them. You understand that by, except for your things that's been put in your life by your parents and you were able to come to Bethlehem and hear the pure, unadulterated word of God and it came into your life and fortified and built you up, except for the grace of God, you or I are in that situation. Now, what are we going to do about it? I know one thing. We're gonna, our heart is going to break. And when's the last time you and I were in prayer over some situation that we have in this community that you and I know about? I want to let you know, if we're close to, you know God's heart's breaking. I want to let you know that's, that if you get a revelation of God's broken heart over the, what's going on in the world, over his sacred creation, then you understand his love and then you'll understand the power that you will resist sin. You don't want it in your life. Help us, Lord. Possesses full dignity and is worthy of respect and Christian love. All right. I felt almost shame, so I just want to go through Scripture since I'm not belittling the Baptist faith of message. But I want to let you know we're not man of some book beside this book. Amen. Acts 17. I just want to read through this. And he has made from one blood every nation of man to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. I so encourage you to take that home and meditate on these scriptures. It's just so powerful. We see the evidence of this throughout all humanity. Verse 27, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. God has made all this situation and set it up with all these many, many humans over this time span from Adam and Eve up till today. And he has set in eternity into every heart, every person having freedom of choice. And today he has extended out, just like he has extended his mercy and comfort into your heart, God today wants to, longs to reach out to those who are lost. And friend, when you run into that cashier at the grocery store, when you, that person comes to your door wanting to render some kind of personal service or fix something around your house, there is an obligation in your heart to pray, and God, how can I touch this sacred, wonderful life with your message? Let it burn in your heart that, Lord, give me some way to touch that heart. So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they may grope for him. And this is one thing every person, you sitting here today, I hope there's something released in your heart that you want to go out and grab hold of more of God to bring his ever wonderful presence into your life. You see that I have a choice that I can go out and make a difference in someone's life. And this is why the whole message of us being a sacred created in God's image is so important. Verse 28, For in him every person lives and moves and has their being, as also some of your own poets. And I, want, I just want to pinpoint that Paul reaches out to those people in Athens. Here he is in a very foreign situation for him. And he reaches out and he grabs something in their culture, maybe their music or a Fifty Shades of Grey or something, and he goes to that and he brings it over and shares the gospel message on something that they hold dear. For we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art or man's devising. Every person is out there, and we, every, you and me, especially me, have all these little idols. And we have things that we are... are alert to, that fascinating, that draw our attention. And they're wonderful as long as they're in right perspective to God. But the minute that those things become more important to us than God, there is danger there. And this is what Paul was trying to express upon these Athens. Verse 29. There's, um, in fact, let's go to 30. Truly, 
These times of ignorance God overlooked in the past, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world, every human throughout all history in righteousness, by the man Jesus whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this by raising him from the dead. And I just want to read one little thing here in reference to repentance. Repentance comes from the word meta, after, and the word to think. The thing is, is that you and I, in light of this fact, I think it's most important that we understand how very important and sacred we are. And how important God has placed us in a position that we are very careful to make every opportunity in our life to touch those around us. Father, I just thank you. Forgive us, Lord, for so many times focusing on the wrong thing. When you have created us in such a powerful, wonderful way, and there are those around us who are in darkness, groping, going after things that are destructive, help us, Lord. I pray your anointing upon every person here, me also, Lord, that we will become more sincere and become more real in our understanding of your love for us, grace, and how important it is to treat others right, Lord. We thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name. Come, Donnie and Jenny. song this week as you go out into the world, that you've accepted Jesus, that you're resting in his hand, and that he will take care of you. I'm going to ask Brother Ronnie Cumbie to dismiss us with prayer. <laughs>